We're all in it together. Well, that's what the government tell us about the current financial situation. So, at a time when services are being hit by the need to make savings, should Cambridge's county councillors vote to increase their expenses today? At the moment, they are below the national average, but an independent report has recommended that basic allowances should rise by nearly £2,000 for each member. We'd like to hear from you this morning, and we have been doing so on Facebook. But first, when council leader Nick Clark joined me in the studio a couple of weeks ago, he explained why he thought there was a case for increasing the money that members receive. Are you happy with the makeup of your councillors, your fellow councillors, or would you like to see a bit more variety, perhaps? I mean, I've never been in a job where I could become a councillor, for instance. Of course, all my councillors are wonderful. I wouldn't of change course. one of them, of course. <laughs> um, but do I think we are disproportionately represented by um, by people who have retired? Yes. Are we underrepresented uh, represented by females and people from different areas of, of society? Yes. And I think part of that is because people just can't afford to be councillors. Uh, 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 and this is not about... The people say about politicians with a nose in the trough and all the rest of it. This is about a basic allowance for a, a member of about £7,500 a year, of which he's expected to do you know, a couple of days' work per week. And if you're running a full-time job or trying to, to make ends meet at home, because councillors are people as well and they live in the community, that's just not realistic. Uh, one of the things I spotted was that, you know, a, a, um, a cabinet member, which is effectively a full-time post, uh, £11,000 a year on top of the basic allowance. And again, uh, this is a real problem. I'm not seeing people rushing to become councillors, where, of course, there's a big rush to become an MP. Now, I don't see um, that the allowances should get in our way. Now, I'm not advocating huge hikes and allowances. That would be inappropriate, certainly today. But I have asked for an independent review of the allowances to take place, and I'm going to keep my sticky mitts well off it. It must be fully independent, but I want that to come through to council as soon as we can, and also for it to be a free vote so all councillors can have a view on it. That was Nick Clark, the leader of uh, Cambridgeshire County Council, who did join me in the studio a couple of weeks ago for a free-ranging conversation. That was what he had to say. Well, listening to that is Richard Taylor from Cambridge, who is opposed to the rise and is going along to the public gallery at Shire Hall today. Richard, good morning to you. Good morning, Andy. The whole structure of British democracy means that at um, a fairly local level, uh, county councillors have to take big decisions about what happens in our everyday life. And surely there is no way that that can be a voluntary occupation, is there? I mean, it's almost a full-time job. Well, um, the fact that um, Councillor Clark's uh, describing being a councillor as a full-time job is one of the big things I, I disagree with him of. Um, I think that, that um, those councillors who are saying they've created a full-time job for themselves, um, being a councillor, in my view, doing it wrong. Um, being a councillor is about sort of setting the direction, taking decisions, overseeing. It's not about sort of actually working for the council and, and getting involved in the details of um, providing the services. So I, I, I just don't think the councillors who are saying that they've got a full-time job um, are, are, um, are doing the, the, the job as they should be. But then we get to the problem of the, the people being excluded from being county councillors. I mean, you heard me there say to Nick, and it's, an, it's a fact, as a teacher and now as a broadcaster on every day for three hours and more, you know, I could not become a county councillor should I want to because, it, you know, it takes up time during the day. Therefore, Absolutely. it excludes people, doesn't it? Absolutely. I think you and Councillor Clark have identified um, some real problems there, but I just disagree with, um, with, with the solution being proposed. Um, I think there are other things that could be done. We could have more localism. We could have more decisions being made um, in, in the rural areas of Cambridgeshire, for example, rather than having to um, have councillors coming into to, to Cambridge on a regular basis. That would save them an awful lot of time. We could have more evening meetings, more um, uh, the variety of times at which the meetings are held, like the, the city council do. All Councillor Clark's got to do is, is take a look at um, what the um, district council in his areas, district councils in his area, are doing. But there are lots of ideas um, for improving things which don't involve giving councillors a 25% um, increase in their allowances. So you would advocate evening meetings or weekend meetings so that people who hold down a proper job and in inverted commas could also become councillors because even if they only have a few afternoon meetings you know if you are committed to your work you can't attend them well i think we can just look at cambridge city council where um they hold most of their um council meetings um in the evening and um, when they do have um, daytime scrutiny committee meetings they um they are very intense and they get a lot done um 
within a day. And the other thing is that so we'll always have some councillors um, who are retired and um, or and those who are able, they're self-employed, they're able to take time off, and we can give different councillors different roles. So there are some things that really have to be done um, during the day. Um, some councillors can do those. But I think for the main full council meetings, there's no reason for them to be all-day events um, every couple of months as they are in Shire Hall. You could follow the, the city council's example and hold them in the evenings. We will hear from Councillor Shona Johnston a bit later on. I spoke to her earlier today and she said, you, you know, it's expensive to drive, to drive these days using petrol. Therefore, you know, shouldn't they have expenses for that? Now, would your argument be that we become so local that nobody needs to drive? Because if you represent, you know, a ward from Wisbeach, let's say, it's a long drive to Cambridge. Well, first of all, we're talking about the councillor allowances here, and the councillors get their allowance, and they get travel expenses on top of that. So they get an allowance, and then on top they get travel expenses and any childcare they need. And we're just talking about the allowance. Now, I would say that the allowance should be to cover things like running a website, phone calls, printing. Uh, and I wouldn't have started from the point that the independent panel has um, and sort of treating the councillors' positions as jobs. I would have um, looked at how much they're spending on things like that and tried to give them an allowance um, which would cover it. Of course, things like um, travel expenses and childcare, those are things which um, differ between um, individual councillors and we should treat those um, sort of on a, an individual basis. So your argument basically is that people regard this as a substitute job and that shouldn't be the case. They should not be oh. recommenced, uh, recompensed for not working. Oh, absolutely. This is my, my big problem with it, is that I don't want to see um, professional local councillors. Um, I think at the moment, especially when you can look at the allowances which um, councillors can pick up from a district council, the county council, then they can get some um, positions on um, things like the fire and police authorities. They can pick up um, allowances which are well in excess of, um, uh, of most people's um, earnings. And I just don't think um, that we should be... Um, rewarding our, our councillors um, in that way. We should have people who are um, working, doing other jobs and, and, um, and being a councillor as well. You're going along, as I said, to Shire Hall. What do you expect to see and hear? Um, well, I, I really don't know because um, well, one problem is that um, like Councillor Clark could have killed all this off. He could have um, simply said what the, the ruling party view was. He could have just said, no, now's not an appropriate time to to hike the allowances and um, we wouldn't be having this debate we would I, I, we, we would be talking about um, the, the other items that are on the agenda scrutinizing the nhs and the opportunity they've got to, to scrutinize the police and um, th this has all been created by um councillor clark who seems to um be, be, be well he seems to want his um, cabinet and himself to be um receiving um, massive um, increases in their allowances I mean, the ruling party are going to vote in favor of it so therefore shouldn't he have just said that well, well then let, 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 let's just push it through well, that's not yes. Um, well, that's not my understanding. My understanding is no, it's a free vote. So I'm saying they, they could have. Um, so Councillor Clark, instead of saying this is a, a free vote, he could have just said um, he could have done, done, been a leader and said no. Now is not an appropriate time um, to make any rises. We're, we're not going to uh, have an extended debate on this today. Well, if you listen to my interview with Shona Johnson later on, you will hear her say this is dividing along party lines, and that you know opposition members who vote against it must therefore not take the uh, take the money when it's on offer. Well, if, they, if the ruling group do vote for it later on today, I think it's going to do some real damage to um, the, the public perception of um, local democracy. Um, it, it's, I, I think our local councillors' sort of um, faces will be sort of in the, the national press for taking such an outrageous decision. Richard, enjoy your trip to Shire Hall today. It's been good to talk to you. Excellent, thank you. Thank Cheers. You, That's Richard Taylor, opposed to the rise, as you would have gathered there. As I say, we're going to hear from councillors a little bit later on on both.